Cast Strength Single Malt Whiskey from Taiwan? Yes and yes. Let's do this. Welcome to Whiskey Riffs. If you're new here, I'm Kevin. Thank you for stopping by and watching this video. I appreciate it. I have some really cool whiskeys today. I went and got a couple of them. It took a little while to get because they weren't easy to find and they are very nice. I mean, look at these containers. This is just cool looking stuff, isn't it? I normally don't like to buy the extra packaging on a whiskey. I typically say, if you can skip the box, skip the box. I don't need to add any more waste to the recycle bins or even the landfill. Some things aren't recyclable. These certainly aren't recyclable, but they're so pretty. Let's start with this one. So it's got a nice little clasp on the side and inside, I mean, a really lovely presentation. And the other one, look at that, isn't that nice? Look, they even give you a little Glen Karen glass in there. I mean, that's just really exceptional. Good job, Kavalon. I don't know what I'm gonna do when these bottles are empty because I hate having these containers around, but until they're empty, I'm just gonna enjoy the boxes. They're very nice. All right, as nice as they are, I can't drink the whiskey while they're in these boxes. So let me get them out. All right, the pretty boxes are behind me. So let's go ahead and dig into these bottles, see what they're all about. Now these are two Solus series Kavlan expressions, and they're both single cast strength. So they pick a single cask, Whatever the cast strength is at that bottling, that goes on this bottle and they tag each one. Even their website shows a range of ABV for these. First bottle I have is their X Bourbon Cast Series. This is a Solist and it is a lovely light color. No other casking, just X Bourbon. The other one is their Port Cask and that is a lovely rich deep dark color. Kavlan Solist that's aged in X Bourbon Casks is at 54.8% ABV. It's a non-age statement whiskey, natural color, non-chill filtered, and it cost me $110. Port single cast strength whiskey is also non-age statement. It's got a 59.4% ABV it's aged in Portuguese port casks. It's non-chill filtered natural color as well, and I paid $150 for it. I have good feelings already about this episode. I'm really enjoying just the differences in these two glasses. Look at the color difference. Isn't that lovely? Got one that's obviously the X bourbon treatment there. No extra darkness or redness to it. And their port cask is just ruby red mixture. The difference between what I had before and what I have now is that original Kavlan, in fact, let me grab the bottle. This was only 43% ABV, so a little bit lacking in the percentage of alcohol. And it also was chill filtered which I was afraid was gonna take away from the flavor. And because I have such wonderful viewers and suggested, you really should get the Solist series. They, uh, they're a cast strength, they're full flavor. You won't be missing anything, there's no chill filtering. And so I did. It did take a while because some of these are really high priced and some of them are hard to find. So the Solist series that I could get were these two and they weren't a bad price. I was happy with that. I think I got them on sale at K&L Wines in San Francisco. That helped having a special sale for them. But, you know, keep your eye out for things like that. Sometimes expressions just show up in the shop and sometimes they offer a good price on them. Let me go ahead and start with the ex bourbon one because I'm sure it has milder notes than the port cask. I'm kind of getting pineapple and berries and vanilla and even some coconut. That's interesting. A little hint of citrus on the edge too. Definitely a cast drink whiskey, a lot of initial burn that is just sitting on the back of my tongue. There's spiciness, but there's a lot of fruit flavors in this one. The spiciness is really well balanced with the sweetness. Oh, that is so good. It has a really long finish and it's really flavorful. I am so impressed with this. It is one of my favorite single malt whiskeys that I've had in a long time. I really should get on to the next one, but let me try one more taste. 
there's even a little bit of, it's not mint, and I want to say menthol to it. And I'm not a big fan of that kind of thing in whiskey, but it's really nice. It is just such a balanced flavor. This is bottle number 97 out of 153. There's a cast number on it. I'll put all that information in the description below so you can take a look at it. Let me go ahead and jump into the port cask finish. Portuguese port casks. Ooh, that's got some funk to it. There is some really dark notes here. I want to almost say like a mushroomy note. I'm getting really deep baking spice notes on the nose. Oh, what is that smell? I know that smell. There's a smell here that I just can't name, but it seems so familiar. Maybe after a taste. Not as spicy as the ex bourbon cask, but even a little bit longer finish on this one. Yeah, that is traveling all the way down. It's really warming me up. Ah, prunes. <laughs> I don't eat prunes hardly ever, but I've had them on occasion when they're uh, baked and really sweet, and this is giving me notes of prunes. That is so weird. I'm so glad I picked that note out because it was driving me crazy. I couldn't figure out what the heck that was, but I knew it. Now I'm getting a little bit of a dark chocolate note and uh, darker fruits, but it's a different port finish than I'm used to. It tastes different than most of the port whiskeys that I have, and I honestly, I'm not sure I love this. It's giving me notes that aren't the right fruits for me. I'm not looking for prunes in my whiskey. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. Hang on a second. Because I don't think that the other Port Cask whiskey from them had anything like this. No, and it's a much lighter, much different experience. Maybe it's not that different. I do like the cast strength better than the 43% ABV. I remember it now and it's very tasty, but it's just watered down. I'm kind of getting a, a wine finish on this one, a little bit of tannins, where this one is really the <sighs> prune juice. It's very strange. It's not like one of my favorite port finished whiskeys, which is the Kinterubin from Glen Morangie. So I don't know what to do with this right now. It's good. It's just not, it's not hitting my palate right tonight. Let me put a little bit of water in it, see if that changes anything about either of these. Because I really am enjoying the ex bourbon cask. And I don't know if I'm enjoying this port cask as much. The water woke up the spiciness of it for sure. Let's see what it did to the ex bourbon. Yeah, the water ramped up the spiciness of both these. I'm gonna put a little bit more water in each of them, see if that changes it at all because I think I went too light with the water and all I did was stir up all the spice. Yeah, I still really like the ex-bourbon cask and I don't mind it with water. I did like it at full cast strength, but I am struggling still with the port cask here. And the port cask was more expensive. That was the $150 one versus the 110. I don't know. What's your opinion? Have you had Kavalon Expressions? Have you had the Solus series? And have you tried either of these two? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear all your opinions in the comments because I'm struggling right now. This is the first taste from these bottles. Sometimes you have to sit with a whiskey and I definitely will sit with these whiskeys. That's why I pour them a little bit heavier so that I can sit with them while I'm editing the videos, try to figure out a little bit more about them. But I am really impressed with the ex-bourbon cask and I really want to be impressed with the port cask. This may be just a first impression problem with this whiskey. The first impression on the ex-bourbon was great. So I highly recommend that if you can get your hands on it. It's definitely a great whiskey at $110 for that cast drink level. This particular port cask, uh, I don't know. I'll reserve my judgment on it. I don't dislike it. It's just not the normal fruits that I'm used to getting with a port cask finish. And it just has something about it that is leaving me with an off fruit taste. So I don't want to have that linger. I think I'll go ahead and grab the ex bourbon to sign off. I do want to hear any comments you have. If you have recommendations for these whiskeys, let me know in the comments. And until the next video, take care of yourself. Take care of those people around you. And cheers. Uh, have you had Concert Massacre? Have you had the Concert Massacre? 
I can't talk. Have you had the poor cats? <laughs> uh -uh.